Hey guys, this is Connors from Gunroom TV and I'm joined today by Ben Ducker, Mini Rifle Grandmaster, to talk to you guys a little bit about bipods. So, historically, bipods have not been needed in Mini Rifle, um, but as competitions have developed and more ranges have opened up shooting longer distances, we've been getting into some bipods and learning a bit more about them. Yep. Um, so my first experience certainly with this was watching you shooting the rifle world shoot out in Sweden where yeah. I saw you using some pretty big bipods. Yeah. Um, some of them store bought, some of them homemade and a lot of adaptations along the way. Um, why don't you tell me about some of the bipods you have on the table here and the choices as to why, why you've chosen these bipods, how they're affixed to the gun and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure thing. So, um, so I've got on the table um, three bipods. Um, two, well, one of which was bought from a store, mildly adapted. This one. Um, yep. So we'll yep. get into that one first. So, so this one is the one that I use for when I'm shooting prone. Um, it has this piece of string. So that was a, uh, a tip from Jerry Mikiak. If he wants it mounted to the gun, pull one side. It will pull them both down. This I tend to run attached to the front of the gun for maximum stability. Um, and this one I tend to use when I'm prone. You've got a little bit of adjustment on the height of the legs there. Um, that's a, a sort of fairly standard, mm -hmm. commonly seen type of bipod. As I say, this is a, I think it's a, it's a Harris. Harris. Yeah, style, you, you, can yeah. Buy, you can buy these in the shop. Um, it fixes to the gun via a non quick release system. So this one um, has got a little screw and a little pair of uh, uh, fingers here that attach to a normal type of a swivel stud adapter that you'll find on the front of the rifle. Yeah. So we've got this bipod that it looks even smaller here, but that's a bit deceptive, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. So, so this one here um, is uh, part of an OEM bipod. I have taken the, the original legs off the bottom of that. Um, credit goes to James Nixon for giving me the, the inspiration for the design on this one. But essentially what you do, you buy yourself a, a pair of carbon fiber tubes. I've then taken the uh, original feet off of the, um, the original bipod and I've affixed a piece of string between them as well to stop them splaying out too much. But the way it works is you, you simply slip these over the top um, and there's enough of a friction fit here that these won't disappear whilst you shoot them. I'll try and remain in shot whilst I, I show you how those click down. Um, this then attaches to the gun via a quick release mount. Mm -hmm. um, the reason for that being, um, as I'm sure we're going to come and talk to in a bit more detail, is so that after you've used it, you can you can get rid of it. Yeah. Um, this one was quite inexpensive to make um, compared to certainly something commercial that would be of this size, um, and it has the advantage with it being carbon; it's incredibly light, so yeah. you actually can run around with this thing attached if you yeah. need to. Cool. And what about this one here? Now, this looks like something. Well, it actually looks identical to the <laughs> camera equipment that Callum's uh, currently using, because this is. Yes. The Manfrotto tripod that Callum has, yeah. although it looks a bit different. Yes. So again, this is um, so this is a camera uh, tripod. However, for the purposes of IPSC shooting, it's a bipod because I've removed one of the legs. Um, I've also changed the the mount on top to again give me a quick release, so I can get rid of this if I need to. Um, so and this, then so what, so in terms yeah. of the quick release, what you've done there is you've screwed. The camera mounting plate to the M lock slots on the rifle. That there. is exactly what I've done. So I'll, I'll just get these uh, legs pulled out and then I'll show you the bottom of the gum and show you how it attaches. Yeah. So essentially, pull those legs out there, um, they will click into position, um, and then we can mount the gun on top and then I can use this in the standing position. So, um, so the first one was for um, when you're prone. Mm -hmm. This one you can use when you're kneeling. Mm -hmm. This one I could use kneeling or indeed I can use standing because it's got that extra bit of height. So you've got three bipods here for the prone, kneeling and standing. Uh, yes. Is there any variation or anything between those? Um, this is... one's got the most amount of flexibility to it because obviously being a camera tripod originally, mm -hmm. it comes with adjustable legs so you can set it exactly how high you want it to. It has a disadvantage though that it's quite heavy. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't really want to move around with this. This is one where you're probably going to fit it, use it at your first shooter position or minimal movement, and then you're probably going to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. This one is light enough that you can actually move around with it. Mm -hmm. So I have shot stages in the rifle world shoot where this has been mounted to the gun. And I've had the gun up and we've been shooting on the red dot. Mm -hmm. We've then run forward, done something kneeling. Then because it, it is quite a lightweight bipod and you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's nothing to that really. Yeah. 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 So um, onto the topic of ditching bipods. Now yes. I, th I know this is something that's come up recently um, yeah. online in discussions. Um, there seems to be some confusion over it. Now we've had a good look through the rules just to double check all mm -hmm. this, but we're pretty sure of this beforehand anyway. Yeah. Um, in, in rifle, there is absolutely nothing that prevents you from ditching a bipod. And in mini rifle, certainly um, whilst the rules are 
worded differently, again, there is nothing prohibiting you yeah. from um, ditching a bipod mid-stage. So why would you ditch a bipod mid-stage? So um, there, this is one particular stage I can, I can use as an example. Um, a stage at the Rifle World Shoot in Sweden. Mm. Um, it, ha it was a very long stage and had combination of different types of targets, different distances uh, from the shooter. So at the beginning, it made sense to stand up and shoot some things offhand. Mm -hmm. You then had to move forward and have some very long targets that you put, and because of the way the road curved away from you, you couldn't go prone. Because if you went prone, the brow of the hill blocked the view so you couldn't mm -hmm. see it. So you needed to use a kneeling bipod to take those targets. Then there was about, I don't know, 30 yard dash or so from yeah. memory, something like that. So you want to get rid of this, get rid of the weight. Mm -hmm. But then at the very end, there were some more long targets and they were around the bend. So you mm -hmm. couldn't see them from the early position and those you best off shooting prone. Yeah. So on that particular stage, I had the prone bipod fixed to the front of the gun. So that was attached here. Mm -hmm. uh, the legs were already down. I then had the kneeling bipod attached. I think this, this mount was actually here at the time, but I had it mounted at the back of the gun. So I could ditch that, run forward. Mm -hmm. That's then out of the way so I can go prone um, and use the prone bipod to finish the yeah. stage off. Yeah. So I know um, when we, certainly when we were out filming the rifle world shoot, I saw all sorts of stuff. So um, we saw the tree stump stage where I saw someone using yes. a uh, like a seven foot monopod yeah. on that yeah. stage. Um, why are you choosing to use bipods and not monopods? Um, it's purely for the stability. Mm -hmm. So um, again, I'm not sure if I'll be able to be in shot while I demonstrate this, um, but essentially if you've got two feet this is going to stop the gun from moving from side to side and then what stops it going forward and backward is your shoulder your body yeah. so you're providing that stability so this is Where, why you wouldn't need a tripod per se yeah correct yeah. so tripod isn't really going to help whereas if you imagine that is in one position you've only got a monopod there's nothing to stop the gun wobbling from side to side so if you had a very very big foot on the bottom that might work mm -hmm. but really you want the extra width to provide that side to side yeah. stability that's going to stop it from rocking like this yeah so you've gone over all the different types of bipods you have. Why is this important for mini rifle? Yeah, uh, so it's a very good question. And actually a lot of people are wondering that at the moment because it's something that's very, very new to be seen in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, traditionally due to squad sizes, number of competitors, a lot of matches have been combined pistol and rifle matches. Mm. So targets need to be achievable for a pistol shooter. Yeah. Now we're seeing more competitors, more stages which have been split. So the rifle shooters have smaller targets, longer distances, and actually more challenging shots, mm. which means that actually there may be an advantage to using something like this. And so what this is, this is um, IPSC equipment evolving with the matches getting progressively more challenging, more yeah. difficult. And this is what drives IPSC, what's what drives companies like Magroad, for instance, to make new products, is the changing competition environment. And I suppose that's why we're seeing more and more the use of bipods and mini rifles. Yeah. So while I was here, I just wanted to also share some uh, tips that I've picked up on the use of these three bipods in particular um, and how it can help when shooting mini rifle. Mm -hmm. um, so starting with the small one, um, this was a tip that I picked up from Jerry Mikulek from shooting three gun in the States and he suggested adding this piece of string between the legs. Um, the reason for that is that when it's mounted to the gun, you can pull down on one of the legs and then the string will pull the other one down. This is very helpful if you've had the gun slung, you need to bring it out, deploy the bipod. Just, if you're going to do that, slinging the gun, that's a three gun That's specific. a three gun yeah. thing, it's not a mini rifle thing. Yeah. Um, but if you are going to do that, because you may, for mm -hmm. some reason, want to deploy your bipod during a stage for yep. a mini rifle, that may still happen, but not from a sling, um, just be very, very wary of the muzzle as you do that. Just make sure you don't sweep your hand as you bring your hand up, but you can save yourself a little bit of time by putting one instead of both sides. So that's that one. Um, coming on to the kneeling bipod, um, so this actually changes your stance when you're kneeling. So um, traditionally, if you weren't going to use a kneeling bipod when you're kneeling, you'd want to be uh, with your right knee, assuming you're a right-handed shooter, your right knee to the ground and your left knee um, in the air. You can then rest your left elbow onto your left knee because that's going to provide the most amount of support to the muzzle. If you're using a bipod, a kneeling bipod, you actually want to switch knees. So mm -hmm. you can put your left knee down, put your right knee up, and you can then use your right knee to support your right hand mm -hmm. because that's going to provide stability to the back of the gun because the front doesn't need it. Essentially on the bipod. turning you into a tripod. Turning yourself into a tripod, that's right. Um, and then the, the, the third tip then is on the understanding bipod. This is something that I learned, as I say, you're probably only going to really use this from a, a start position um, before you move anywhere. And so quite often the start position is going to be with the gun held at waist level. If you bring it up too fast, it's going to swing and not land straight. If you bring it up a bit more slowly, the feet are going to stay where they need to be. It's going to get you on target for that mm -hmm. first shot a lot quicker. So you're keeping those feet dragging on dragging the floor on the rather ground. than hopping up off exactly the ground. Exactly right, yeah, exactly right. 
And certainly while we've seen a lot of um, homebrew solutions at the Rifle World Shoot, a lot of them were store-bought. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to thank you very much, Ben, for coming down and talking us through the bipods, why you have them and how you use them. Um, this has been Connors with Gunroom TV, and I hope to see you soon.